Whew. So for the title of this video, I was enrolled in law school and now I'm not. So what happened? Yeah, so first, why I wanted to go to law school, um, because my formal educational background is in geography, that's what my bachelor's degree is in, and <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm filming this out in front of my house, and it's, I mean, not like a busy street, it's residential, but there will be cars passing by, so hopefully that doesn't make this horrible. <sighs> So yeah, I studied geography, uh, thought I would go into sustainability, which to me, what I want to do with the law degree is still sustainability, but uh, like environmental sustainability. So yeah, I was on that route. I ended up in a with a job in the sustainability um, in the sustainability industry, and I kind of hated it. Hate is a very strong word, but I very, very, very much disliked it. Um, very early on, I was really bored. Um, I, I was working for a nonprofit organization. It was really bored, but what really irked me is I felt like I want. I'm gonna make a, another video about this, but the organization I worked for, I just, I was just triggered all the time by their lack of like awareness of racial problems specifically for a black person yeah i need to make another video but it was just frustrating because uh my job was working on these programs and policies that for you know sustainability especially like when i started working it was 2020 like covid was happening wildfires the trial the derek chauvin trial was going on for the murder of george floyd so organize, a lot of organizations are trying to like make the flip and do more racially progressive things <sighs> like this organization I was working for and it was just like gross, it was just tacky. I felt I was being used to a certain point because of the color of my skin to get them like diversity points, whole other thing anyways. So I didn't like it because of that, I know my value and also just the job responsibilities itself. I don't know, I just kind of sat there like, what's the point of all this when people are getting killed on the street and stuck in jail, prison for life? Okay, anyways, so that, you know, like my job just was like, okay, what about like law school? I, I started to, with everything in politics going on, I noticed that a lot of these people trying to, that, I'm not saying that politicians are like, the best arguers or anything but I'm saying that I mean people in this country follow our politicians they vote for them it makes a big difference so a lot of them well not a lot I shouldn't say that but I noticed a good number of politicians have gone to law school and if people listen to them I was like okay well I want I want people to hear my voice and to do that effectively so I looked into law school a bit more and there's where it started I have um, a whole nother video detailing this more specifically and what I did but after I figured out I wanted to go to law school and quit my job I studied full-time I had about three and a half months of like no other responsibilities just studying all together maybe between four and five months of studying um, adding the bit where I was working full-time as well so not long and yeah, I applied as soon as I got my scores back. So timeline, let's see, it was 2020. I worked um, August and September of 2020, studied October through the test, which was mid-January of 2021, I guess that would be. And let's see, got my scores back maybe one or two months, two months later in March around applied and I'm pretty sure or wait I don't know actually I'm pretty sure I got my score sooner and my applications were in by February I don't know it didn't I'm butchering this it didn't take that long and yeah I started getting acceptances 
I was accepted to University of San Diego, California Western School of Law, American University, uh, Washington College of Law. I got accepted to those, like, in a good time before this summer started of 2021. And I was still waiting on my Howard University response and I hadn't heard from them and I didn't hear from them until like June I believe um pretty late so but I was accepted so Howard University California Western School of Law University of San Diego and American University why I want to go to law school a little bit leading up to the enrolling and then now I'm going to talk about how I picked a school and enrolling so out of all of those schools, my top two were California Western School of Law and Howard University School of Law. And yeah, the reason why those were my top two and what I was looking for in general in a school, looking for a school that had a emphasis and real support for students wanting to go into the public sector, um, what do they call it, public law, because I knew I'm doing this strictly for, for reform and like criminal or, or justice or civil rights justice, even an in intersection of, did I even say that? So I want to go into criminal law um, or some sort of civil rights law can overlap that maybe. But my point is, I'm not doing this to work in a Fortune 500 company or big law and make a lot of money. And toots to everyone who does that and does that. Sure, it's a hard journey. Um, that's just not my goals. So a lot of schools do like cater to that. I kept an eye out for scholarship opportunities and cost was another factor. I think that was going to be one of my uh, biggest factors is if, like, what sort of scholarships I can get. I am trying to be financially savvy with this like it's my responsibility and I was looking at how many colored people they had um students staff faculty that sort of thing so those that's how I those are the criteria I had in my mind knowing I needed to go pick a school so I chose California Western because they offered me a full scholarship for my first year and that was the highest scholarship amount I've gotten from any of the other schools and I, um, it's in San Diego and I just went to San Diego State so I was familiar with the city and the idea of moving to a city where I didn't have that anxiety over all this new surroundings seemed like a good idea to me um, I had friends there just knew it. I love San Diego. So, yeah. And what else? For a for a non-HBCU school, California Western did have the, the pretty high like diversity rating compared to most of the other schools I applied to. So another thing is their dean was a black or is a black woman. And I f felt like in all of their publications and just sort of like things that they really did put an emphasis on social justice and not just like other types of law and highlighting their alumni alumnus who have contributed in that way and um yeah also i had a personal relationship no there's landscapers going with someone in San Diego, so perfect cherry on top. It just seemed like perfect, you know? Oh, and, and they have a program called the Innocence Project, California Innocence Project, and the director of the California Inno Inno Innocence Project goes to California Western and teaches there, and they help to exonerate individuals wrongly convicted of crimes. And I thought if I can go to an HBCU, or if I don't get in, or if it doesn't work out financially, anything, then this seems like a great program to do what I want to do. And it got me very, um, I just wanted to do that. So that was California Western. And in terms of enrol enrolling, it was super easy. Um, 
it's pretty transactional you just pay money and enter that on their online portal portal and that was that so i paid my deposit probably in may or something i waited until they had some sort of virtual event and then i enrolled and yeah my other choice howard why i didn't stopped considering it is because they hadn't responded to me um they took so 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 long and i don't think i got my application in that late so by this time i already had a full scholarship i was comfortable moving in the city it seemed like i had a plan so i decided to go with california western um little did i know like two months later i would be accepted to howard but by the time i was accepted to howard i had already moved to san diego so So leading up to law school, once leading up to that, I just kept working um, as I can. I do kind of gig work, like I deliver groceries for Instacart and then trying out some other things of my own, but that's what I did. Just enjoyed life because I knew law school was coming and I just only hear about how life changing it is and difficult. So I really just like didn't do much, like just tried to work and like live live life enjoy it and stuff i felt pretty good like leading all the way up until law school was starting i for a person who does have anxieties and high emotions about some other things and doubts and stuff like that yeah i kept a kept a certain like outlook that made me feel optimistic and positive about the experience basically Stay in your own lane, like worry about yourself, don't compare yourself. That's the best advice I've ever heard. Comparison is the thief of joy. I feel like I talked about that in my first video, but you know, you can do it. And I think, I don't know, I guess that's just how I am. Like everyone can do their own thing, but like the world is so freaking big. Anyways, so just stay in your own lane, that's what I did. And so um, I also, did two programs over the summer to try and prepare you for your first year. It was a JD Next program that the University of Arizona made and partnered with us to give. And I also did a program that my school did just for its students, Cal Western. And that was a summer skills program. So the JD Next program was a little bit more um, concrete we we read cases like pretty much every week had a case with it and then like presentation on the area of law or subject and writing case briefs and submitting them so it felt more like what i would probably be doing in law school in the summer skills program which i also enjoyed for a different reason the first one i felt like more practical and then the one through my school was nice because they had uh, professors from their school come and talk to us and give a little intro on their subject and I felt that that was super cool so I'm like okay this is like a little taste of what law school could be like meeting people and feeling the energy and yeah I got good energy from the professors and you also got to see some faces and virtually meet your classmates so that was nice so I did do those and yeah I felt good I didn't go through it feeling like oh my god I can't do this I'm so overwhelmed right now like no, not to diminish if other um, incoming students felt that way, but I feel pretty good. I fuck if I understand, like, no, I did not, like, <laughs> completely understand the cases and brief properly, but I was just so happy and lucky to be able to be intro to it, knowing I have so much time to work on it and get it down. So more personally, how I felt outside of law school, so I moved to San Diego a couple months before school started and I started to feel really lonely, honestly. Um, you know, like the friends I do have were like working full time. It's not like they're horrible friends and completely ghost me, just people start getting busier. Now I'm farther away from my family, not like I 
to entirely that close with my family that I live with now. Yeah, I just felt lonely, kind of sitting there waiting for something to happen. Not really having a whole lot of people to hang out with. Personally, I was feeling some like something happen, but I felt good because I was doing what I was supposed to do. I was going to law school. I was doing my courses. I was I moved to San Diego, like almost by myself. Like I was living by myself, taking care of myself for months and doing good. I think. But yeah, I felt a deep. I just felt kind of bad about myself. So, shame and anxiety about like not doing enough, this, 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 that, that, blah, blah, blah. Like all the time. And it's something that I felt for like years now and I just have to like get over. So, just saying. I don't know, I think I was scared. Like, I feel like I didn't quite understand what I was going through or how to do better if I should do like just millions of questions a day going through my head and so that leads me into now I want to talk about why I'm not going to law school anymore the first reason and this is not number one as in most important I think number two is most important but number one in the weeks leading up to starting law school I was supposed to start August 30th of 2021 today is October 8th so just a couple months later after that um yeah a few weeks before that like early August maybe like later July I I forgot what compelled me to do it I just I looked a little bit more into the school so when I found out about Cal Western I did see some reddit posts like oh how wasn't this scam and i was like yeah right like stay in your lane taylor all these people that talk crap about non-top tier schools just i don't know want to put some fear in you but i was under the i was like do your own thing go to whatever school make your own path all of that so i ignored it but something in my mind told me to like look it up again again i didn't have like much to do over summer so just like doing stuff um I looked it up again and read through the Reddit again and I think found someone else's Reddit post and decided to look at it myself. And basically there's calling California Western a scam school, um, giving that they bait their students with these scholarships, usually full ride scholarships. However, that they are actually like alone. And I was like, hmm? Someone was saying, they said like, so but they're saying like what this means is if you don't finish the law school program at their school you'll owe that much money back all of it and let me just reiterate and say that not reiterate because i didn't say it this video but tuition at that school is fifty six thousand dollars for one year that's a lot of money um compared to some of my other schools so not as much but not good and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to finish law school. I kept reading. And then it said, so if you want to transfer schools, you have to, you owe the money back. Oh my God. If you want to transfer schools, you'll owe the money back. And that's what kind of like stopped me for a little bit. Because I was like, what if I do want to transfer schools? What if I do exceptional and I want to try to transfer to Harvard or Stanford or Yale or something my second year? I know students can transfer. Is it probably a big asshole? Yes. Hello, you're in law school. So, um, and also thought about like personal reasons. Like, okay, what if, <laughs> like, I'm currently I'm 22. I'll be 23 soonish. So, like, I'm an adult now. Like, trying to assume more responsibilities for the family. Like, if something happens, I'm the oldest one. Could need to be there for something. So I was like, what if something happens? Um, I have family both in Arizona and on the East Coast and what if I need to be in either places like for something drastic and I need to transfer schools then I'll owe $56,000 on top of whatever happened so I was like that just like doesn't seem right and also I was like this is weird because I read the my full scholarship letter and it didn't say any of this so once I um I'll put the yeah with the reddit people 
said up here and everything else I found. So I went to the school's website and had to search for the policy and it wasn't easy easy to find. Well, no, first what I did was went back and read my scholarship letter. So I'll also put this up here. Um, I, I hope this is correct. I recall it says how much it is, the stipulations on if you get it again or not, it's depending on your GPA and class standing and blah, 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 blah. Um, in the, this document that I received, it didn't say anything about that. It's two pages, I believe. So I was like, okay, it doesn't say anything about what was mentioned in the Reddit. Let me go see if I can find it somewhere else. So I went on the school website, had to like find their policy page, which was like not the easiest. Find the one that had to do with um, the scholarships, which it wasn't titled scholarship policy. I think I found it under the admissions like policy or something like that. So I found it, I put it up here and yeah, it said what I read before. And so that just kind of changed my view. I felt like, yes, like I just felt like it was being kind of s trying to hide it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's what it is, then please like send that policy with the scholarship letter. Like when you just send the letter and have these expectations with it or certain criteria to be met to meet the scholarship, it makes you think like, okay, that's it. That's the thing that's the policy this is the scholarship letter and what you have to abide by to like keep it and taking responsibility and also when i signed a form to kind of en enroll and assume responsibility for any loans and accept my accept my scholarships also i went and looked at that form i'll see if i can find it and didn't say anything about what happens if you stop the program or transfer schools or anything it was a very simple form so that was very not straightforward. I bet you a lot of students don't even know this who have started and gone there. So I don't think that's cool. And other than that, just not being cool, that's just on the basis of it, that's not something I want. I want to be able to transfer if cause something could happen. Like I'm tired of throwing myself into situations that I am not prepared for. So that kind of really rubbed me the wrong way and that I just kind of put that all together just like a month before. Now. Yes, semi, semi my fault, because I had months to look this up and look it up and look it up. So that was me sharing this, so hopefully that doesn't happen with you all, you all. So that's reason number one why I didn't want to go to that school anymore. Reason number two. I'm gonna get a little sad here, more serious. Um, yeah, um, I had a boyfriend and he broke up with me about a month before law school started, was supposed to start. Um, and that just broke me, not that, that was the tipping domino or whatever, and that on top of all of my other issues I haven't dealt with just came crashing down. I wish those landscapers could stop, but I don't want to go inside my house because I don't like people to hear me talk and I just thought the lighting out here would be better. What I'm trying to say is that breakup, um, not only was that difficult, I just, um, I just broke and got really, really depressed and I have been for the last two months. Like I said, today's October 8th and these last couple of days here have been the first days that I have been able to 
go to sleep without crying and wake up without crying and not cry in the middle of the day at the grocery store when I'm trying to do an order and um, just not feeling like a complete pile of shit. Okay, so this should be a lot better than the sound of leaves blowing outside. So I was just saying um, things are really tough. If you're, I don't even know what to say. Um, I just went through a really dark period. Still am. So yeah, I guess maybe that's all I need to say about that. If you yourself are feeling bad in any way, there are many ways you can get help. I'm even reluctant to say like, Making the choice to not go to law school is a logical decision to me. Um, starting with the scholarship thing, I mean, just logically, I was just was like, okay, um, that's a big deal. And I also found that out around the same time that my like personal mental health was going down. So yeah i was like well i can go to a different law school like i've enrolled but i haven't started yet so i haven't you know like i haven't been charged anything quite yet or had to pay anything or on the hook for anything so i just in the midst of my sat like in with like how i felt i just like Yeah, I don't think I should have started law school how I was doing. It's kind of sad to say because I, I felt ready. Like, I felt pretty good about law school and I was ready and um, I worked hard to get there. And this has never happened like this before where I just completely, like, shut down. Um, I didn't know things were as bad as they were. I've had like these episodes before, one time junior year in college, I was really depressed and I wanted to drop out of school and I was just like, couldn't tell anybody because I knew everyone would say like, why you can do it, like, I know I'm capable, I just know it's not something I have to rush into right this second, right now. If I was going to go to law school, I wanted to be super awesome at it and where I was at, I was not ready to show up and be super awesome and stellar at being a law student. And the more logistically for law school, I thought like, okay, if I want to apply in another year or two or five or 10, like what do I need? And it's gonna be okay. My LSAT score is on file for some more years at least. I have more time to study for the LSAT again possibly get a higher score and higher scholarships. My letters of recommendation are still on file. And if not those, again, within however long it's gonna be, I have opportunity to get another job, get more connections, get another letter of recommendation for someone more recent. Um, then it's just coming up with the money for the um, test again, if I want to, for the application fees resume, personal statement, and yeah, so I guess because I've already gone through it one time and got an idea of what like my credentials like could get me, I was like, okay, like I think I can do this again and hopefully these schools understand because this isn't just like a small thing. Uh, it's a very serious issue that I needed to take time off for. <sighs> I decided if I'm going to go to law school, I'm going to go to Howard Law. I would hope that, again, their institution is does listen at least to how this has been a factor into why I applied and then just didn't go to, like two weeks before. So yeah, I'm tired of the bullshit. 
maybe I should have gone to Howard in the first place. Um, but if I can get there eventually, it doesn't matter how you get there. I just want to be surrounded by the culture. And, like, I live in Glendale, Arizona. <sighs> I'm just tired of a lot, and I think that would be a great place to be. And I let this full scholarship cloud my judgment on moving to DC. <sighs> so, what I'm doing now, I'm living at home. As I mentioned and just said, I live in Glendale, Arizona. Oh my god. I take forever to go to the bathroom. Like I said, I live in Glendale, Arizona. I live um, with my family, with my mom. So, yeah, and like I said, it's only been about two months since I was supposed to start school. And that whole entire time has been very rough and dark. A very rough time um so i'm taking it day by day i'm trying to i'm taking it day by day i'm working i'm trying to try out some side so i'm like my energy just like went down after talking about like how things have been um I'm working I'm just trying to be okay like within these two months and everything that's happened also I've moved not once but twice from San Diego to Arizona then within Arizona to another house like in the same city and just like it's been a lot so I'm just trying to live so that's all really I'm still deciding on if I want to apply to law schools this cycle applications recently opened up or next cycle or the next cycle like i said i'm only interested in howard law and unfortunately their website has been down for like a month at least so i need some information um so yeah if you're watching this i thank you for watching this all the way through and Hopefully there's something you liked about it or that you can learn or something. So that's why I was enrolled in law school and I'm not going anymore. I wanted to end this video by telling you that it is okay to not be okay. If you are feeling suicidal or deep depression or lonely, um, please reach out to anybody, and if you would want to, there is help online, there are therapists, anything, um, so yeah, take care of yourself, comparison is a thief of joy, and you're doing your own journey, so.